Good morning, my quilty cuties. I hope everyone is doing well this morning. This is Saturday morning, um, April the 27th. This month is over with, guys. Where did the time go? All right, so this morning I am working on, it would be easier to do this right here. I am working on Cotton Cuts Tree of Life puzzle mystery quilt this morning. So I'm trying to get caught up on all my clues. So you're going to see cut a few of these videos back to back just because I'm trying to get caught up. I was late to sign up and, and unfortunately sign up is now closed. You can, but they have another puzzle mystery quilt coming up. Sign up is May the 31st. If anybody is interested, it's called, the theme is Wild West. So if you're interested, uh, they have a Facebook page. You can uh, join their Facebook group and you'll know when that's ready or keep an eye on their website. Uh, just a disclaimer here, I am not affiliated nor am I sponsored or paid or given any items from Cotton Cuts. This is purely sewing for the enjoyment of sewing. I am not sponsored in any way. I just wanted to put that out there. All right, so we are to clue two. And I've read and reread these directions to make sure I do it right this time. So we are going to take 8D. Y'all can't see. I'm going to back you up. I'm going to back you up. Sorry, I was eating chocolate just a second ago. We're going to take 8D and we're going to make flying geese with A. We're going to take A and D and we're going to put these together and we're going to make flying geese. So let's get started. Yep, just like that, just like in the movies. So how was everyone's week this week? Were y'all, did y'all have a good week? Were you doing well? I hope so. I hope you had a fantastic week and everything was fabulous. So. Let me turn my stitch length down to about two. It came a storm here last night. Let me tell y'all what. It was bad. It could, I don't think it was as bad as it got in some places, but it was pretty bad. And it is windy outside, so I know y'all can hear the wind chimes. I have the door here in my sewing room open. It's a nice, it's cloudy. And it's kind of damp, but it's still a nice day. The sun's peeking in and out. And, you know, I love to hear my wind chimes. Some of you guys may find it uh, quite annoying. I don't know. I hope not because I love my wind chimes. I love them. I love to hear them. Oh, my gosh. I was at the farmer's market just a few minutes ago helping the husband because he's filling in for dad this weekend. And there's a lady selling handmade wind chimes. It looks like she made them out of glass bottles. Oh, they sounded so pretty. I don't know how much they were. I wanted to walk over and see how much they were, but it was like, Liz, where would you put them? Where would you put them? I have no idea where I'd put them. Oh, I can find somewhere, I'm sure. But I love wind chimes. Do I do? Grab one of those. One of these. We're making eight again of these. Oh gosh, y'all, I really, really like this. I really like that the shapes, the pieces are already pre-cut for you. I can't imagine the time that it took to do this, but I really do like that these are, are already cut, ready to sew. And all you have to do is sit down at your sewing machine. This would be perfect for a beginner. I know there's flying geese and half square triangles and all of that. But with these being pre-cut, you don't have the worry of um, miscutting, you know, or not cutting accurately. All you, you would just sit down at your sewing machine, start sewing, and... Um, gain skills. You would gain your sewing skills 
and more confidence and more comfortability when you sit down at, you know, because some people are intimidated by sewing machines. Nothing to be intimidated over. It's a machine. You tell it what to do. You're the boss. But it would be, this would be an excellent way for a brand new quilter to gain some experience and to become familiar and comfortable with their sewing machine. Um, I just think that it's fantastic. And like I said, you don't have to worry about errors and cutting or any of that. And let's... All right. Okay. I'm going to press these. Be right back. All right. Are y'all in close enough? Can y'all see well enough? I hope so. I'm trying a new camera angle, of course. I can never leave anything well enough alone. That's just me. I'm always for the new. Can I try something new? How would it work if I did this? How would it work if I did that? You know, I'm always trying new stuff. There we go. But yeah, this would be an absolute fabulous way for a brand new quilter who has just bought their very first sewing machine, but has been too afraid to turn it on. Been there. Been there many, many moons ago. I have been there in those shoes. So yeah, I just think that this would be an excellent way. because part of the equation has been taken out for you. And uh, yeah, anyway. Anyway, that's my, my opinion for what it counts. So we're gonna spend, I'm gonna spend this weekend, hopefully. I had thought about taking off Monday and I may still do so. I put in for a vacation day, but I may change my mind. Just to get some sewing done because it's, my crazy life, you know, there's always something going on. And you would think with grown children and, you know, we wouldn't be that busy. But we are. And, um, I thought about taking off Monday just to get some sewing done, get caught up. Sorry, I'll finish that line of thought there eventually and get caught up. Um, And this method of sewing, of like having multiple whips going on at one time, I don't know that that's so much for me. Um, I'm kind of like a one project at a time kind of person. I like to work on a project, see it all the way through, quilting, binding, I mean the whole nine yards because I quilt my own quilts myself. And... Um, and then move to the next project. So, but with block of the months, you know, you need something to fill in in between those times. That I get, I understand. So, anyway, it's just a little, uh, it's a little different for me to do something like this because in all the years that I've been sewing and quilting, that's how I've always done it. I, I start a project I go all the way through that project, complete that project before I move on to the second one instead of having five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, in work at the same time. So this is a little different process for me. Quite, quite, the, quite the difference. And it's taken me some time to wrap my mind around like scheduling. All right, now we are finished with this portion. Oh, is that jiggling? I said I could stop it from jiggling. It may make it worse. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the next step. I'm gonna leave those up under my pressing board while we're working on the next step is to take an E and a D. Can y'all see? Yeah, maybe. There we go. We're gonna take an E and a D and we're gonna make more flying geese. So working on a schedule. Yeah, I gotta figure this, the whole schedule thing out because I really need some kind, and I do have a planner, 
and I'm working on scheduling. As I said, if you watched my unboxing of my Annie's that I received yesterday, you know, I was talking about keeping a schedule. It's almost near impossible because something always comes along and throws a monkey wrench into my well-laid plans. For instance, today, my daughter and her fiance are moving and they procrastinated about, procrastinated about this whole moving thing. And now it's the last weekend and they have to go get the remaining stuff out of their apartment, get it cleaned, you know, so they can get their deposit back because they're supposed to be completely out by May 1st. Well, you know, you can't get much more last minute than this, you know? So I'm so aggravated with her. So aggravated. So Jimmy, I don't know that I'm gonna go up because I can't pick up any of that heavy mess. So Jimmy's gonna go up just to help. There's a couple dressers and um, a couple dressers and a bookcase. I think is all that's really left. Heavy stuff, and they have some boxes. You know, they got boxes. They've got to, they've got to move, and then they have to clean. I'm not, I'm not helping do all that. They're, they're big peoples. They can figure out how to do it. <laughs> Am I a bad mother? Am I a bad parent? Do y'all think I'm a bad parent because I won't go help do all that? That brother sit here and sew? It's not just sit here and sew. I have laundry to do, um, cooking, because, you know, I'll have... I have things that I have to get done that I don't have time to get done during the week. Oops. Like I dusted this morning out here in my sewing room. Isn't it amazing at the um, lint that gets everywhere from just sewing? It's amazing. It never ceases to amaze me. Paper crafting is even worse lint that comes off paper is ridiculous. But no, I'm, I'm hopefully y'all don't think I'm a bad parent because I won't go up and help them move and clean. I just, I don't want to. I hate moving, you know? And I didn't agree with them moving anyway, so. And that's a whole other story that, I, you know, don't, I, I'm not going to bore y'all with the details or anything like that. I don't think they should have moved. So. But whatever. All right. I am going to cut these apart. Give them a quick press. And then we will sew on the other side. This one's going pretty quick. Okay, now we're ready to put on the other side of our flying geese unit. While I had the camera paused, I had to go change out the laundry, <laughs> fold up a load of laundry. Um, you know, I took care of some stuff. So it didn't seem like just a second, not even a second for you. <laughs> oh gosh. I haven't decided if I'm going to sign up for the Wild West. I probably will. It just it sounds fun. Yes, it sounds like it might be fun to do. But I've definitely got to get caught up, so I'll be... If I want to do the Wild West, I'll be able to. I hear somebody beating on something out there. And it ain't the hubs because he is uh, at the Fulmas market at the present moment. There's always something, somebody building something around here. 
there he is. Somebody's all, it's usually us, but there's, <laughs> there is always somebody building something. That one didn't, I, did, I didn't let that one quite line up. And I think it'll be, we'll look at it when I press it. I'll, I'll look at it when I press it and see if I need to take it apart and redo it. There we go. seems to be going together and um if you do decide to sign up for uh the wild west the upcoming puzzle mystery quilt um read your instructions thoroughly read them read them again and then go back and read them again make sure that you triple read and make sure watch it there's tons of people that have videos online not just me there's tons of other people that have that do this as a sew along too for their followers so make sure that you if you don't understand the directions clearly you know find somebody who's doing who's doing the puzzle mystery quilt too and and cotton cuts actually does videos as well they do, they do a sew so along video i do believe Although I haven't been able as of yet to locate one, but I haven't really looked. I haven't looked that hard for it. But there are uh, quite a few people I know on YouTube that, that are doing these puzzle mystery quilts. So, I said, if you don't understand the directions, find somebody or come back and watch me. I would love it if you'd come back and watch me and we could sew together. That would be awesome that would be fabulous if you come back um i'll let y'all know if i decide it, i'm more than likely yes i'm going to because i find this absolutely wonderful i'm totally enjoying it be right back gonna go press all right worse those are now all pressed and under the pressing board and now we're taking d and b and we're going to make more <laughs> flying geese Oh gosh, we're flying grease, geese crazy. Not grease, keep geese. Golly, I can't even spit that out, can I? Good Nancy's. We are flying geese crazy. <laughs> go get that line I feel guilty leaving my husband at the farmer's market by himself. I really do. I feel guilty. <laughs> I wanted to come home and sew. I did. I wanted I want to sew. I just want to sit down at my sewing machine. I just want to sew. But I do feel really guilty. I feel really bad. I am now. I wasn't at first. I didn't feel guilty at first. Man, is it windy here. Yeah, at first I didn't feel so guilty because I was really aggravated with him. And uh, now I feel like really guilty for leaving him there by himself. <gasps> oh gosh, do y'all do that? Do any of the rest of y'all do that with your partners? You know, you get kind of aggravated at them because they, they wanted to do something that you tried to tell them not to do, they wouldn't listen, did it anyway, and then, and then, uh, it's not that he needs my help. He doesn't need my help. He's perfectly capable of doing sitting at the farmer's market by himself. You know, he's perfectly capable of that. But, you know, you feel that maybe you shouldn't have um, uh, 
left them to their own devices, so to speak. Oh gosh, yeah, I feel really bad about it now. I do. Do I feel bad enough to stop what I'm doing and go down there? Absolutely not. I will apologize. How about that? <laughs> I'm so mean. My mother, she, she says, Elizabeth Ann, you're so mean. I am not. Not mean. You know what's coming. Gonna clip these apart, press them, and we're pressing towards this, towards the light side. Okay, you have de pressing directions are on the pattern that tells you which way to press. So make sure that you follow those because if you do, all your seams are going to nest when you go to put this together. Be right all right. Now, I didn't let these cool off. I don't think quite as much as I normally do. They went under the pressing block, but should have left them for just a few more minutes. It'd be okay, though. It'd be okay. If I can get my fingers to working. Almost done with this clue. This is clue two, in case I didn't say it at the beginning of the video. I hope I did. I hope I did. I want that to line up. Be very careful because it is very, very stretchy. Very stretchy. Very, very stretchy. Okay, because we're sewing on the book bias. And, well, it's cut on the bias and we're sewing on the bias, so it is very stretchy. I've got to go get groceries today. Tomorrow. I think I'm going to wait till tomorrow because it's supposed to be... I don't think it's going to rain during the day. Yeah, it's supposed to rain this afternoon. I hate going to get groceries in the rain. I hate it. So, um... I think I'm going to wait. Me and Judith's going to wait and go to the commissary tomorrow. I need to go to the commissary. Get some doses. Really don't, I don't need a whole lot, but I haven't been really good about cooking this week. I've been lazy. And I have to eat right. Or I end up eating junk food because you know what I had for supper last night? A bag of protein chips. Yep, that's what I had for my dinner last night. So I really tried to cook because if I don't, I end up eating like that, which is garbage. So, and we do, and I do simple things during the week. By the time I, it's about 4 30, 5 o'clock before I get home, it depends. On, you know, if I leave work late, about 4.30, 5 o'clock, I get home from work, and um, I try to do really simple things during the week, spaghetti, tacos, um, a casserole, something, you know, I can cook up right quick, pop in the oven, and it's done. I really, really try to do simple things during the week. And then on the weekends, like tonight, oh, I need to go lay it out, too. Um, I'll do this pork chop casserole thingy that Jimmy absolutely loves. So, I think I may have to put my pork chops in some water, cold water, so they'll thaw out a little quicker. And it takes that particular casserole a little bit longer to cook, so I try not to do it during the week.
because we go to bed extremely early compared to most people. He gets up, he has to be at work at 5.30 in the morning, so he gets up at 4. You know, it's early. Be right back. All right, now the next step is that we take the A, D, which are these, and the D, E's, and we sew them together. Not like that. See, read and reread your instructions. We sew them together like that. Let me make sure I got that right. A, D is on top, and D, E is on the bottom, just like this. Okay. Yes. Okay. So these are going to be sewn together just like this. So when we sew these together, I want to get up here. Can you guys see? Turn it the right way. You see where these stitches cross right here? We want to make sure and sew on this side of where those stitches cross so we don't lose our point. And if we lose our point, hey. It ain't no big deal. It's not going to be the end of the world. But I really don't want to. <laughs> okay. So, let's put these little puppies together. Taking care when we go right through there. Hopefully we didn't lose our point. Okay, so these, whoop, this goes on top. I am recording, right? Yes. Oh my gosh, yesterday, I thought I had recorded. Took me four stinking times to record that video. Oh my word. Oh my word. And all I could do was laugh about it, you know? What, what else are you gonna do? What, yeah. What else are you going to do besides laugh about it? <sighs> I'm still chuckling over it. Four times. Four times. Oh, well, wait a minute. Yeah, like that. Okay. I want this one on top so I can see that I'm not losing my point. Lift that foot up. I'm going to have to scoot over a little closer, I think. Line these edges up. Make sure you stay to this side of where those stitches cross. there just like that take you a few anchoring stitches y'all something else too and I've forgotten. I've forgotten what it was because I thought y'all might chuckle over it and now I don't remember what it was. I'm not, I forgot. I did go lay out the pork chops by the way when I had the video stop just a second ago. I sure did. I took my fanny in there and dug them out of the freezer, put them in the sink. We'll see how much they thaw out between now and when I need to cook because we still got quite, I mean it's still a long time. tell you about something else and now I don't y'all ever do that you got something on your mind that you want to tell somebody and then um, you get busy doing something else or you, you get distracted and then there that thought goes into the wild blue yonder never ever to be found again 
never to be remembered again. Ooh, I got blues. I got blues on that one. Okay, here's our last one. I would suggest not using steam. I forgot to turn the steam off on my iron. I would really suggest that you do, you press dry on these. And I'm fixing to turn my steam off. I'm gonna to remember to turn it off this time. Um, maybe that's what I was gonna tell you guys. To use a dry iron, no steam, because it will uh, distort your blocks. And with these being already pre-cut, it will cause some shrinkage too. Okay, let me press these, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we take the last flying geese unit that we made, which is B and D, and we attach it to the bottom of this unit. I'm gonna have to move some stuff over. Of this unit, like that one does go like that. You have two that point up and one that points down. Can y'all can y'all see that? I don't know that you can see that. Let me back you up just a minute. Maybe that was not right. There we go. But we'll have it going like this. It's really hard for me to get y'all in where you can get it where you can see. And it, it goes, we're gonna do it like that. Show my table. Sometimes my table gets slid. Oh, come on. I know that's a thick seam right there, girl. Come on. Okay. Take this one. Put this on the bottom. Just like that. very important with this being thick right here that you pick that presser foot up and then place your uh, piece up under it to stitch because it's really going to push it. It'll really make it go askew with that being thick because you have several seams because you have this seam right here, and then you have this seam right here that are going together, and it's really thick right there. And I don't, you know, a good industrial machine, you know, if you have one of those, probably will cope with it better than our domestics, even though, you know, this is a nice machine they still can struggle over big humps like that. You want to go slow over it and not start out at 100 jillion miles an hour like I want to do. Didn't your mom ever tell you, do as I say, not do as I do? <laughs> Have you heard that one? I've heard that one. I heard that my whole life. Don't do as I do. You do as I say. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, yeah. Lift that foot. Place your piece up under there. Start stitching slow till you get over that hump. Then pause. Take the time to line up your two pieces. I'm gonna have to pull on this one.
This one looks like it got warpy. It got little warpy pants going on right here. I thought it pushed that one off, but it didn't. Okay. All right. We have this one and one more to go, and this step is finished, and we got two more steps. Y'all know the drill. Gonna cut these apart. I'm gonna press them and I'll be right back. All right, my little lot lovelies. The next step is to take an A. A. Make sure you keep up with this. You will need this. Do not lose this. Take a picture of it. <laughs> Do not lose this. Because you will I you will need it. So we need an A and a D. We're going to sew an A and a D together, and then we're going to add a B. And we need eight of these. Make sure I have this lined up. So A. D. I'm just going to lay them up here. And I'm not paying any attention to like if this is directional. Cause I, I don't think it's gonna matter, honestly. Because I don't know where in the quilt this is going. I have no idea of the placement where this is going to be. I would assume that at some point, you know, we're going to have a tree in it at some point because the name of the quilt is Tree of Life. So, listen to that happy little bird. I would assume that we're building a tree. I would assume. But, you know, assuming can get you in trouble. <laughs> Don't make assumptions. Last one. Alright. I forget I have this and that I don't use it. I know. How could I forget that I have it?
little bird cranking me up. All right, so now we add D to the bottom of B. Add B to the bottom of D. Golly, I'll spit that out in a minute. Okay, so now we're going to take one of these units, hopefully y'all can see one of those units, and one of these units that we just made, and you're going to attach this unit to the left side of this unit. And there are going to be seams to match up, so I'm going to pin these, and when I get them all pinned, I'll join you back here and we'll sew them together. How about that? And that way you ain't got to sit here and, or just, you know, sit there and watch me pin. I don't, I don't think I've, I've explained how I pin before. So y'all should. Oh, there's my son-in-law and my daughter here. So y'all should know how I pin. I'll join you back here shortly. All right, we are down to the final step. I have these all pinned together, hopefully in proper order. <laughs> I ch checked and double checked my directions, so they are in proper order. I do wonder about that. I'm like, did I do that right? And then I panic and I go back and I look. Hey, hey Adam. Uh, are you nice? Okay, guys, sorry about that. That is my son-in-law, Adam. They're working on getting moved out of that apartment. He needed a putty knife. Took me a minute to find it in my paint stuff. I have paint stuff, so. All right. Never sew over pins. Do y'all love the sound of a sewing machine? I 
absolutely love the sound of a sewing machine. Like, I like to watch people sew. I just love the sound of listening to the sewing machine. I don't know, I find it comforting. I'm weird, I guess. I just, I do. Now we're going to square these blocks up to nine and a half by nine and a half. I am going to check it, but they should be pretty spot on because we have taken care with our seam allowance, how we pressed. Whoop, that's a, come on. Sometimes it, it gets stuck. Let's see if that made a blobble. I think it'll be okay. It did make a little bobble. finish this like at a really good time because I need to clean and oil my machine before we do the next glue and then we'll be caught up. Just making sure. Double checking and making sure. I'm going to clip these apart, give them a press, and I will show you what clue number two looks like. This has been so much stinking fun. I love it that it's a mystery that you just don't know what you're getting. And I know there's other mystery quilts out there, like Fat Quarter Shop does one every year, a designer mystery. May have to try that one out. May have to try one up. I think it's already started, so. All right, let me clip these apart, give them a press, and then we'll look at what clue number two looks like. All right, my lovelies. So this is what clue number two should look like when you finish it. Make sure that you clip this to your sheet of paper or however you intend to mark it so you'll know which clue this is. Actually, it should be labeled as, da, 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 label these section two. This is section two. I'm going to just clip it all together so I know what is what, like I did with my previous one. I hope you enjoyed watching me make clue two. Now we're to clue three and we'll be all caught up. Yay! All right, guys. See you back here later. Bye for now.